Here comes Shadow Ranger very aggressively. He's in behind Luna. Luna in some trouble. There's a big stun, and she never stands a chance. She's melted down. In comes the rest of the team. Lying against the stun. Shadow Ranger does go down with the finger. John Pack is in some trouble. A nice Yule play there. Uh, Puck survives. So now we're down, Lone Druid. We lost the Nyx. Buyback from the Luna. Lion goes down. Puck in some trouble. He does drop. Slaughter drops as well. And that's a four-man wipe. TP's coming out. Frogs finishes the job, but gets sprouted in, and he's going to drop as well. So Luna does get the buyback and the finish. It's a team wipe. Uh, TMG, everyone goes down. They lost three and bought back on Lucid, but Lucid needs to make the most of this. They have about 40 seconds to make this push and try to take them towers. Up on top, Nature's Prophet, the ability to split push, going to come in while they are down. Let's look at those buyback statuses real quick. Buyback on the Dire. We've got a yes, a yes, a yes. So three yeses on major heroes. They can buy back right now. How are they be able to? Will they? Probably not. They're going to let this tower go down, and they're going to let them push mid. So that is a great play for Team Lucid, a much needed play to make sure that they stay in this match. It's a cracker of a match coming out of this Lucid TMG matchup tonight. Uh, top notch Dodo and exciting to watch here. And here they go, they're gonna push the high ground. There's not a lot of time left on the respawn, so they will have to TP away. So timing was just right for them to only have to be able to take a tower. Enough lanes were pushed down, uh, but now all three lanes pushed right up to the high ground. Snowman's going to go on the bottom lane. It's getting very low. Big blink from Slaughter. Gets the stun. TMG especially all over him. He pops the, BK, the Shadow Blade. Does not have a TP out yet. Cannot do it. And uh, he's going to go down. So almost had it with that Sprout, but not quite enough. And they'll get a deny on this tower. So it's good that they got the deny. Uh, that said, though, that that team wipe on the push here in the mid gave the tower advantage pretty heavily to Lucid. Now we see a smoke. It looks like Shadow Ranger is going to lead the charge. They're going to rotate in. They're going to catch Puff here. Puff in a bad position. There's the root. Puff in control. Big blink from the slaughter. Puff going to drop. Domre going to drop. And now that is two down, three down, four. Lucid, TMG now able to rotate up. They're going to push this tower. Aggressively, unforgivably, they're going to just tear into this one. Uh, gold was back in the way of Lucid. We're going to see it drop down after this tower push. Our Shadow Ranger uh, getting very, very fat, along with the Slarter, who has his BKB up and running. And this tower should be about the equivalent of Mince Meat. They're going to save the they're going to save the glyph for the next big push here. There's the buyback from that Death Prophet. We should see a glyph try to push him back off. They're waiting for the creeps to spawn. Lion doing a little bit of harassment. There's the throw from the Death Prophet. It's what she's good at. Forcing off in a wave. And TMG will fall back. Knowing that this game is still relatively close. Uh, and far, I would say it's much farther than relatively close. It is right neck and neck. Both teams performing very strongly. But neither team taking an overwhelming lead right now. This is a match, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at Luna's farm. Luna has not picked up a new item since that BKB. She has struggled. She's gotten picked off a few times, and that is really starting to slow them down. That said, though, Snowman does have his Hex Stick online now, so that Scythe of Ice can be very powerful in these upcoming fights. Also, Puff has picked up a Shiva's Guard, so that is also going to be used for him, and Death Prophet does have her Yules online, so some nice farm coming out of them. Snix does have a Dagon now. Uh-oh, let's jump to the mid here. Puff catches Puck, and Puck goes down. They are able to finger Nyx as he tries to sneak in from behind. They use that ulti with the Death Prophet, and that is going to be a nice two-man kill from them as they decide to push up this middle lane. They're going to have to force TMG to fall back and do some defense and maybe rotate this into Roche is not up. They will check very quickly. No Roche. So uh, I would not be surprised if they choose to maybe hit the Ancients and then rotate towards the bottom. No man does decide to go towards the bottom. Now, this is dangerous. They are separated, and that is all Shadow Ranger wants. So, Shadow Ranger making a big move. Nice stun by Lion. He's going to come in. There's not much you can do by yourself, Death Prophet. Echo Slam from behind. Puff gets the stun on the Wind Ranger. Shadow Ranger. Shadow Ranger going to try to run around the outside. There's the silence. Big move by John Pack. Turns into a frog. He's going to follow with the stun. Caught in the sprout. Shadow Ranger's got nowhere to go. Turned into a pig, and that hex stick pays off in dividends, and they get themselves another Lone Druid kill. Puck takes a second to pause the game, maybe catch his breath, say, what are we doing? No more throws. Uh, stay together, and that is exactly what they're going to have to do to keep this game under control. So group up on the bottom, push that lane. It looks like they're going pretty hard on it. The Roche is up. It has been pinged out. So A3P was tracking the timer, knows that Roche is available, wants to go in and do it, and uh, they're immediately going to pull off of that lane and head towards the Roche pit.
a gold graph all over the place. XP graph pulling aggressively back towards Team Lucid. Let's take a look at that hero level. So 21 is the lone druid, but the rest of the team has started to catch up on him. So he falling off just a little bit with those early pickoffs, but here they come. They know what's happening. Nick's going to come in and check things out. There is no vision here for Lucid, so they're not going to know that Nick is in. He's going to see if he can't steal that Aegis. Big stun. A little early, though. Caught in the sprout, so he will not be able to get there. Aegis is ground. Aegis is picked up by Luna. Soulfu is going to pay with his life. Meanwhile, up on top, Puck wants to move on John Pack. John Pack's going to go down. So a beautiful silence play. However, they move here. Blink away, but we lost the Nyx. We lost the Lion. Nyx a much bigger loss at this point. Unable to get that Aegis. Moved a little too early on his Impale. Meanwhile, Dreams comes in to fight with A3P. A nice phase shift to dodge that incoming damage, and he's able to get himself out with the Blink Dagger. But the push will not stop. They're going to pull back now. They do need to be very careful, especially since this. Uh, they don't know that a DD was picked up by the puck, which could make her very dangerous here. Puff finds him, blinks in, uses that stun too soon. Now Puff has some serious trouble. Pops the double damage rune. Puff's got nowhere to go. Uh, but the rest of the team comes in. Nice play with Lucent Beam. Does a little Yules on himself. That's not going to do anything but buy him time. Phase shift again. Jumps a nice stun, knowing exactly where he was going. Beautiful play by Earthshaker. Uh, there is the spin. The Yule Scepter used by Domre. Another jump by Puck as he goes back down towards the bottom. But Puff, again, knew where he was going. Blinks after and gets the kill. And they get the Radiant. They get the Dire Courier. We do see Luna go down. We lost ourselves to Death Prophet. Luna's coming back up into a bad place right now. And Luna will drop for a second time. So they lose the Puck, but they get an Aegis. They get a Luna. And they get a Death Prophet. So that's an exchange that TMG will take all day. That said, however, epic play by Earthshaker to stay on that Puck like glue and not let him get away. Even though he was making jumps and jukes like I've never seen before. And now the push is on. TMG knows that they need to make this happen. Luna is going to get very strong in this late game. And uh, they don't want to deal with that. Nature's Prophet also getting pretty farmed up at this point. He does have his Necronomicon online. They don't want to risk that split push. They're going to move in. They're going to find themselves Snowman. Thinking, Speaking of the Nature's Prophet, he cannot get anywhere. He cannot go anywhere. Down he drops. And this is bad because that means that they're down three against this push. And TMG is going to fall back right now, which I question. They need to make sure that they get those creeps. They did a good job. Actually, Nature's Prophet did it. He utilized his trees while he was caught out to slow down the creep wave and buy some extra time for his team to come up here. That said, it wasn't that much time. One more creep wave is going to meet them outside of the tower, which is convenient for TMG. They're going to take out the creep wave without losing too many of their creeps, as well as have them close enough. There's the blink in Sulfu. Big blink, grabs the jump pack, throws him back with the Rubik. Puff also in some trouble. Rubik gets a nice stun. Lying gets a nice stun. Puff on the run. TP coming out. And Luna comes right into the fight. Pops the glyph. We see the blink away. Death Prophet goes in aggressive with her ulti. She's going to start doing some damage. There's the Eclipse. No one is dead yet. Just that de the Nature's Prophet we lost earlier. John Pack in some trouble. Rook was able to steal the ulti. So this is a big mix-up here. BKB is popped on the Death Prophet. But that does not stop the ulti from doing damage. Puff on the stun. Caught in the Dream Coil. Puff is going to go down. So is Zoe. And that is a two-man wipe. Buyback from the Earthshaker. A3P in some serious trouble. Going to drop again to that Rubik. Rubik stole the ulti from Death Prophet. And that could be the kiss of death in this match. Huge Echo Slam! Earth Spirit gets half the team with one shot. He's going to be able to finish Shadow Ranger with one more throw. There it is. He finishes him off. He ends up getting four with a massive Echo Slam. Now Snowman comes in. He's going to follow up on Frogs. Frogs got nowhere to go. And that is a rampage for the Earthshaker. Earthshaker carrying this team on his back right now as they get a massive team wipe. Chaos dunk. And, uh... <laughs> Puff puts on the big daddy pants and does what he came to do. He's playing out of his mind tonight. Let's look at that kill death count here. Earthshaker right now is 14 and 8 as a support and has been crazy good in this match so far. I have to rest my voice for just a second after that fight. That was crazy. So Puff headed out to the jungle, confidently running around on his own, which is a bit of a dangerous situation to be in. Meanwhile, Death Nature for Prophet up on top. They're going to have to push these lanes back, and uh, he wants to get some wards up. He does not want a attempt. This is a couple minutes out from the Roche, so I don't think that these wards are overly necessary, but they want to see maybe when Nyx is coming in. He doesn't have any obs, so I'm not sure. I think he's just trying to get some D wards out there. 
Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet is going to get caught by Sulfu. Pops his Shadow Blade, but Sulfu was ready. Gets the stun, follows with his Vendetta. Snowman's got nowhere to go. Dagon blinked by Puck, and this will be a dead Snowman. So they melt him down, send him back to the Ancient so that he can uh, think about what he's done and come back in 69 seconds, which is a very long time. Luna's going to farm up some Ancients, moving towards that mid. TMG making their aggression. They know that they have a slight advantage right now. They need to stay together. They need to be aggressive. They need to watch that Echo Slam blink, which just was massive power play by the uh, Earthshaker early on in this match. So they now are aware of its danger, and they will be careful with it. Here they go, entering up the front lane. The tower is down, nothing to stop them. Spirit Bear is coming in. There's the ulti from Zelderoth. She doesn't make a follow, so Rubik will not be able to steal it. There's a nice stun from the Earthshaker again. Shadow Ranger is going to have to withdraw. And he decides to remove himself from combat instead of risking that initiation that we saw last time around. A nice sentry ward here to watch for that Nyx Assassin. And TMG wants to come in. They're waiting for the next creep wave to make that happen. They're waiting for that ulti to run out. When that ulti runs out, they're going to have a hard time stopping this push. So here we go. They've got their creep wave. Will they come in with it? They should. They put up the super ward. Frogs has been on fire with wards tonight. His D warding warding combos have been outrageous. He's been the only team able to keep wards up because of frogs. Here they come. There's the play. They want to move on Soulfu first. There's a huge stun. The jump again. Puff gets himself another kill. He's going to fall back before. There's the Yules on the lion. Lion's able to turn back around. The spirit bear getting low. Spirit bear is going to drop. Shadow Ranger gets knocked down by the finger of death. He drops as well. They move on the puck. Puck caught in Yules. Yules in blinks away. So he will get out of there. Dreams, however, not far enough away. Puff, ready for him. Walls him in. He's got nowhere to go. He doesn't have the illusionary orb just yet. Puff on the follow. He has the echo slam. He has the blink. And uh, there's the phase shift. And he blinks himself away. He should be in a pretty safe situation, but he's not. Donnie coming in from behind. Doesn't it, it, Just not. Oh, 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 Sprout misses and saves the puck with that Sprout. Uh, Death Prophet tried to silence a beautiful phase shift to prevent that, and then a jump to an orb that got him out of a sprout that would have meant his death and a three-man wipe. But TMG unable to take the high ground in this match so far, and a gold lead that was almost 3,000 for Lone Druid by himself has fallen below the Nature's Prophet. Gold still pretty even. XP brought all the way back to that midpoint, and this is still anybody's game. And now they're going to pop their ulties. They're going to take the high bound. And now they're going to have to fall back. They know that they can't really. They have to be careful on these initiations coming out of taking high ground. High ground has been the, the real Achilles heel here for TMG. That said, TMG was able to go in. And I want to point out that they did their damage when they came to top. They did it on the melee racks instead of the range racks, which they got it very low, but it's healing back up insanely rapidly. Meanwhile, Puck tries to make a little jump here, which would have been foolish going up against the ulti of the uh, Death Prophet. She has 83 seconds left on that cooldown, so they're going to have it up. Mm, uh, they're not going to have it up for this next push if TMG comes in very aggressively. Roche is getting close, but not quite yet. So one more push coming out from TMG. They know that the spirit. They know that these spirits are down. So at this point, it's really a good play for them to move in while Exorcism is gone. There's a big stun. Block them out of his base. He says, Earthshaker says, you know play, you know come. And it's going to do everything he can to slow it down, buy time for his team to get in position, get their cooldowns, stop what the creeps are working on. Luna is now, by the way, sitting on a Manta style, so that is very important. Shadow Bear, Spirit Bear, caught out in a bad position. He's going to go down. Frogs comes in, and Frogs gets burnt, so Frogs a bit out of position, gets pulled in, and he's going to get shot down by that Earthshaker again. So Earthshaker with another kill. There's a Frog up on Solfo. Solfo is going to drop as well, and they're having Frog Legs for dinner as they now make the chase. They want to get themselves some Slaughter who jumps. Puck in, some, in a tough position, but he's going to be able to get out as well, and the chase is on as they're going to push right up the mid. They know that they've got him out of position. They know that they've got ulties burned death prophet will be back online in 17 seconds for this top push this should be it if they go straight up the middle they're going to force the tps they won't be ready in time and they should be able to take the high ground
All right, so here they go. Buyback stats. We're going to pull it up on the screen so we can keep an eye on it. This is going to be a big fight. There's the ulti. Silences come out. Shadow Ranger wants to move in. He's the only person who can stop this. He's using that Maelstrom to kill Kreese, but it's not going to be enough. There's the Blink by Slaughter. Just a slow down progression. Nick. Necro units are out. Shadow Ranger is stunned. Shadow Ranger in some trouble now. Getting bopped. Getting hit by the Lucent Beam. He's going to fall back. TMG comes in. Especially he's doing a ton of damage. John back. going to be the first one to go down in this fight. Yules himself gets away from that. So a nice play here. BKBs are popped out. John back still low. They get themselves a starter. They do lose John Pack. They... Nick's assassin still has not come out. We got the buyback from the puck who went down. And they're going to fall back. They get the barracks, they get the tower, and they start to run. Snowman in some trouble now. Shadow Ranger wants to finish the job. He gets thrown up in the air. He will not be able to get away from this one. So Snowman is going to drop. So they trade a snowman and a lion for a tower and two racks and are able to fall back for their next defensive push. And that is a play. A play for Lucid that really went their way here. Meanwhile, up on the top lane, the creeps are able to take a tower of their own. So huge plays out of Lucid. That gold chart up, up to the top. 7,500 to the benefit. And they're bringing a lot of damage into this fight and making a lot of money that's putting them way, way ahead. And now they'll rotate back around, head back into the base, get themselves healed back up and prepare for this next push. Smoke of Deceit's lying around everywhere for anyone to use. But they haven't needed it yet. The shadow, the Lone Druid's ha allowed himself to be caught out a few times, and that's really put him in a tough situation. Dreams jumps in, uh, uses that Blink Dagger, but that's not a real Luna, and uh, the real Luna nowhere to be found as he pushes this lane up, and they're going to push all three lanes. Both teams know that one wipe next to the base would result in a loss for either team at this point. So, ultra safe. Meanwhile, Roche is going to go down to TMG. No contest here. So this is Cheese and Aegis, and that is a big deal, this pickup. The third Roche, uh, that late Cheese is going to be very valuable for them. He's going to get a little Ancient Farming for Shadow Ranger, who now has the Assault Curus as well as the Aegis. He's going to be very hard for them to kill this time around. Pings out on the center. It looks like uh, Lion saying that he thinks they're going to be coming right up the mid, or maybe that there's double Sentry Wards right on top of each other. I think that they, uh, yep, two Sentry Wards, different players, didn't talk it out, threw them down at the same time. So interesting, funny play, unfortunate waste of gold. And now they're going to push up the bottom lane, they're going to push up the uh, mid lane, and they're going to get all those lanes in a good position that if the fight goes awry, it'll buy them enough time to get back and do what they need to do to stay in the game. That said, however, TMG is in a good per, per, a good position to take this high ground. The Aegis, uh, plus the gear coming out on them, that is a Dagon 3 right now. I'm sorry, Dagon 2 on the Nyx Assassin. He's about to have the gold for a Dagon 3 uh, in about 20 seconds, and that will come out to him as well looking at the gold chart it is still to lucid favor, but at this point in the game doesn't really matter that much take a look at items as they are out eagle song is now up on the luna she was able to pick that up uh, they do pick up a gem as well let's see shiva's guard hex stick on the earth shaker so now that is two sheep sticks up on lucid which i think is going to be very valuable for them as a necro three up on the nature's prophet um, as well as a desolator on slarder which accounts for some plays that they made early on in this match or not early on. In the last in the last exchange, they were able to do some good things, and that was partly uh, because of that slaughter pickup with the Desolator. He also has his Reaver on hand. Uh, we have the Lincoln Sphere up on Dreams, which is good because he's been getting initiated on very strongly when he comes in to start those fights, getting stunned out. So what's going to happen now is he'll blink in. Earthshaker is going to try to use the stun to slow him down. That's just going to pop the Lincoln Sphere, though, uh, and be able to let Puck get off what he's trying to accomplish when he enters these fights. So that said, we wait now for who wants to make what push when. They're going to farm a little bit of jungle time here. Lion should have... Nope, he does not have a smoke. Ooh, no smoke on anyone at this point. Except TMG. Rubik does have a smoke. I think if they could benefit from a smoke and rotation now, they know that the entire team is pushing the bottom lane. And now they have a choice. Do they base race middle? Or do they stop the push on the bottom? It looks to me like a base race is the best choice for them. They have more mobility. They have more speed. TMG, or I'm sorry, Lucid sees it coming. They're going to have to make a decision. They're going to send their creep wave ahead and most likely TP back to stop this push. However, this is a ridiculous amount of summonables. A, a formidable Zeus strat heading into this tower. TP will come out. Shadow Ranger will use that Mjolnir and uh, take out the Zeus in a couple of swift blows. So no chance that those summonables would do anything without the backup of the heroes. Meanwhile, at the same time, Lucid goes back to stop them as well. So both teams think the other one's going for the aggressive base race. Both teams TP back and mass. Both teams see no one to fight.
stop the push and we'll go right back into what they were setting up before. Now the longer that Lucid delays the team fight, the better for them because that Aegis is going to be a huge issue. The fact there's an Aegis and a Cheese uh, creates a 6th and 7th man essentially in this fight. Shadow Ranger being very bold here. All right, so the whole team is mid. It looks like this could be it. A mid versus mid. Push up the mid. This is what we came to see. 42 to 41. Gold advantage, negligible at this point in the game. XP, dead even. These teams are as evenly matched as they can get at this stage of the game. And they smoke up, and this could be the initiation that we have been waiting for. So the Super Ward did not see the smoke. They were just out of range of it. They have the blinks to enter the base. There is no tower to stop them on the entry. So just waiting. I think Dreams will start this off with a huge Dream Coil jump. Slaughter will. He pops the sprint. In he goes. Gets us on A3P. Here comes the Dream Coil. Time. T especially has turned into a frog, but A3P is going to drop for Anybody can do anything about it. Soulful in some trouble. Pops the BKB. He's going to go down. We lose the Nyx. Uh-oh. There's the ulti from the Death Prophet. We lose Death Prophet. Buyback from the Luna. Buyback from the DP. Earthshaker is down. Shadow Ranger in some trouble. He's on the run. He is going to get away. So they make a counter push. They get the puck. They get the Nyx. Uh, John Pack. Huge jump too. Gets especially. Catches him out with that stun. And uh, they want to chase again. Frog's in a bad position. Domre very, very fast. Doing the speed build. Uses the Yules to slow him down. Moves in around him. Rubik throws him back. But it's not going to be enough. He's caught in another Yules. And uh, he blinks away. But John Pack almost in range to use the stun. He does not. So a nice jump forward with that Force Staff. And Lion, or I'm sorry, uh, Rubik able to just barely get out of that one. So we end up with a 3 for 3. But forcing two buybacks out of Lucid. So if we look at that buyback list, we'll see that the Radiant side is, or both sides rather, are woefully short on buybacks if we see a team wipe here on this push. But the pushes are coming out with Slarder down, with Puck down, with Nyx Assassin down. They know that they have the ability to push this high ground. They're only missing one, and Earthshaker is a support as much as he has been played aggressively as well as a carry in this match so far. They're going to split push top and bottom. Here comes the Shadow Ranger. He's going to stop the push. So right now, Domre, who doesn't have the ulti up, is going to have to fall back along with A3P. Up on the top, Snowman is also going to have to fall out with John Pack. They're going to move back towards that mid position and regroup. Orange is pinging out, so Earth Spirit says he wants them to guard that mid lane. Uh, the push coming up pretty aggressively. They're going to have to spend time stopping the push. Nyx Assassin chasing Snowman wants to get the kill. Uh, almost in range, but not quite there. We should see an impale in three, two, one. There it is. He goes to the meta. He follows with the impale. He's got the carapace, and he goes down with the Dagon. So he turned into a frog, but it doesn't even matter. Uh, Sofu gets the pick off on Nature's Prophet, and that's a huge pick off for them because it means they do not have to worry about the TP split push while they make a move on this high ground. Worth noting, I should say that during that last fight, the Shadow Ranger did use his Aegis, so Aegis is no longer available, neither is the Cheese. So the Aegis and the Cheese really is what saved this game from being over after they lost that last fight. All right, any new items to speak of? Desolator on the Snowman, but Snowman now irrelevant as he was pushed back out of this fight. Ultimate Orb up on John Pack. The Butterfly is up on Luna now. And uh, let's see what else we got here. That's about it for brand new items that we have recently seen come out. So that butterfly can be very valuable. There is the buyback from Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet will most likely consider heading top to push this here and force them to go back to defend. Yep, he's teeping up to the top. He's waiting for Shadow Ranger to get engaged and become pot committed to this push. Like the more time that they can know, he chooses not to. He stays in, and the Spirit Bear is going to go down. So a little bit of free gold there. Shadow Ranger is turned into a frog. Big jump on Aegis Prophet. Here's the Echo Slam. Dream's in some trouble. Here's going to be the first one to go down. They pop the ulti. He's going to drop like a rock. T especially he's going to go next. There. Oh, he gets away just barely, but not. That ulti too, too strong. And they fall back. BKBs are popped everywhere, but that is physical damage from that Nature's Prophet, and they cannot handle it. Sofu's still putting around behind, trying to pick somebody off at the end, but he cannot find anything to make happen. And the push is going to be coming aggressively out of Lucid. Earth, Sp Earth Shaker comes in, gives his life, but able to knock down the enemies, get them low. Uh-oh, John Pack finds himself Sofu. Turns him into a frog. Throws him up in the Yule Scepter. He's got nowhere to go. He's surrounded on all sides. Blinks away. John Pack on the chase. He does have the stun up. He will use it right here. He catches the Nyx Assassin. But he pops that Carapace. Sofu in some trouble now. Sofu, one more right click will do the job. 
There it is. He finishes him off. Long range right click. A3P now on the chase. They'll rotate back around, head towards this mid lane and get a big push while the rest of the opponents are down. Buyback status is, is the only buyback available is the Lone Druid. He will use it if they close. Scare them into considering not pushing this tower. But if they go right up the middle, ignore the sides and take these towers. They decide not to take the risk. They're going to go straight into the sides. They want these racks to go down. They want more creeps. They want to guarantee this win. Big stun on Shadow Ranger. Shadow Ranger came in to fight. Nothing's going to work for him. He gets stunned down, turned into a pig, and killed. Frogs comes in to help, and he's not going to be in trouble either. Loose and beam. Shadow Ranger buys back immediately. Here he comes. But he's coming in to put a stop to it. Luna's doing a ton of damage just with those Mantas. Snowman comes in as well. They pop everything he's got. He uses that BKB. It still right clicks. One more right click. Finishes him off. Sprout for the frogs. Frogs gonna drop as well. And that is another two man kill. Dreams jumps in though with a massive dream coil. Does a ton of damage. Phase shift. He's in trouble. The, the Lincolns does not save him. And the GG comes out from TMG at 54 minutes. That is a win for Team Lucid versus. TMG, they take the first one and we move into game two of this best of three roundup between Lucid and TMG. My name is Toffees. Thanks for joining me here tonight. Stick around. We've got at least uh, this next game, possibly two from these two teams, and then our late game tonight also. So if you like the cast, I hope you did. Follow me at Toffees underscore Dota 2 for updates on upcoming matches. And stick around because the next game is coming up shortly. That said, I'll play some music as we transition.